Hi guys, what's going on and welcome back to another episode of Conqueror's Blade. So, I kind of wanted today to get our mass heads on a little bit and dig into some of the more hidden unit statistics. We'll just sort of see what we can learn from some of the ways, some of the implied statistics but that you can't actually see from. So what I mean by that is let's go over to our barracks and we can see we've got our various units here. I've been trying out quite a few different <laughs> unit types to kind of see which ones I like. But if we dig into some of them, we get some strange things. So, for example, obviously you can promote your units. As they get an increasing amount of experience, it tells you down here, when you get so high, you go up a unit level. And that's the unit training over here. You can use that to increase it. And then down here below that, we basically get information about the unit. It tells us its health. Um, then piercing, slashing and blunt, armor penetration and damage. I've never quite been able to work out fully how the armor penetration and damage exactly works, but loosely I, I'm guessing something around armor penetration is a modifier based on uh, the armor value of the thing you're hitting, and then the damage is the percentage of the armor penetration that you're actually doing to the unit. So if something has low armor, you do your full damage. If something has high armor and you have low penetration, you do a small percentage of your potential damage. Um, but beyond that, it doesn't really give us any more info. It just tells us the number of the units, their health and their a little bit about their blunt defense. So a bit about their basic armor as well. But then if we go into unit training, we can find a little bit more about certain things. So this one I thought was kind of interesting on the archer because it, it, it tells us about um, so the damage. So the, the archer is obviously firing arrows, which are piercing. It tells us about the piercing damage is 1351 as a fixed value. Yeah, when we go in here, it's strangely worded, I think. Increases minimum damage by 4%. So it doesn't say damage because if we then go over to um, a different unit say I think it's a sword militia and go in here it's specific yeah increase sl oh, slash defense there's a damage sure there was a damage just got to find it uh, no that's the open plains one okay there we go. that's the one I was looking for each level increases slashing damage by 2% so that's specific it's saying your slashing damage here which is, of course, um, their main attribute. You know, they've only got a slashing weapon. Their slashing damage is going to increase 2% per upgrade of that skill. Well, that makes sense. I can work out exactly what the damage increase is going to be from that. But it implies that their damage is a fixed value, 948. Yet, by the, the way the archers talk about it, it's saying that it's not a fixed value because you're increasing the minimum damage, not just their damage. But that implies there's actually a range of damage. So where something has a damage of... You know, a piercing damage of a thousand is perhaps not, but it's more 900 to 1100, and the average is a thousand. That was kind of one thing I noticed. Then, beyond that, there's other little small things we can learn. Something I didn't know was if we go over to the domain archers, we see there's an ability here increases maximum high ground damage bonus by 15%. So it's not giving them a high, da high ground damage bonus, it's increasing their existing uh, high ground damage bonus. So that implies realistically that archers have uh, do more damage when they're on high ground. But you'd never know that. There's nothing there to say that. None of the things tell you that. None of the formations tell you that. But from that, we can actually learn that if you can get your archers on the higher ground, then there's clearly a, a benefit to that. And if you kept this ability, then that benefit is even better. But that's something I kind of noticed. And there's also a lot of open world stuff. A lot of this stuff down this bottom row tends to seem theme often more the the open world stuff i think when it means increased damage in urban terrain i believe that refers to the open world urban terrain rather than specifically uh you know when you're in the streets on a siege map or on the desert on the desert in a in another type of map i think that that refers to the open world type stuff because if you go to other units that sort of shows uh the way that works and that opens up just a slight interesting sub point that uh, it's very tempting to think that these earlier units, like the tenant farmers, uh, something like the village watchmen, which which are a pretty crap unit in any sort of fighting, any siege or field battles, you think, oh, I'll get rid of them as soon as I can. But one thing that you must consider is that they're one of the few units that actually get upgrades to their harvesting duties, to their open world mechanics. Because if you look at uh, labour, which is the, the, the effectively how useful they are in terms of resource collection, and resource collection is going to play a real major part once this game starts to get going because remember there's no NPC resources anymore really. 
you know, you're only so resource collection is going to become really useful. Look at their labor value is 6.8, which is quite high compared to say something like an iron cap swordsman, which is 3.9. So if I take my village watchman, I'm going to get double the amount of resources from the same site as if I took a unit of iron cap swordsman. If you're going out specifically to the resource gather, you're going to be wanting to take units like this. If that isn't reason enough to keep a few of these types of units around, and by village watchmen, it's not just village watchmen, it's tenant farmers, similar sort of thing. And what's the other one? I'm sure there was another one. Oh, woodcutters. Yeah, they have a similar sort of thing as well. Um, but these ones are even particularly high, the village watchmen. But then they actually have, they're the only ones that get these sort of specific buffs. So, um, so you know, increased collected resources, a little bit of damage on planes, collected resources, uh, food, food consumption, so you can go further without uh, running out of resources, and resupply cost. So, but these two collection ones, you know, 40% increase into your collected resources is actually really quite significant. It wouldn't take that long to get that. So it's worth bearing in mind that it's worth keeping a couple of this type of unit, even into your later game, because uh, I think that's going to be pretty useful. But another option you have, or which it seems is going to be having, but doesn't so currently seem to work for me, so I'm guessing it's not yet implemented, is the idea of promoting a unit. Oops. So if you go to promote units, you can see valid promotions. So if we go over to the tech and unit tree, you will see that I've got these village watchmen, uh, but in effect, these village watchmen relate to the pikemen line. So therefore, they're a valid promotion to the domain pikemen. I don't know if I have any domain pikemen, do I? If I did, I suspect the domain pikemen valid promotion would be to pike militia, and then pike militia could probably go halberdiers or prefecture pikemen. So the idea is you can continue to promote your units along the lines. One thing I'm kind of interested to how it will work though is we have these village watchmen, which are uh, you know valid to promote to to the pike militia, but they often these units don't share um, conjoined training trees. So for example, the training tree. If we go to the to show you on the unit tree briefly so it makes sense. I've got both the sword militia and the iron cap swordsman. The sword militia will naturally promote to the iron cap swordsman. Um, yeah, it even shows you the ability to do that. And it does actually give you some really nice unit statistics on that, which is actually kind of cool, something that you didn't really actually use to get before. It does show you, you know, how, how what changes, you know, their health goes up, what things go up or go down. And you get, you get to learn which abilities they learn and lose. Which is kind of nice because you get things like shield rush, which is a really great ability. But they don't share the same abilities, the same unit trainings. If you go on unit training here, we see we have quite an extensive tree on the sword militia. But then we go over to the iron cap swordsman, wherever they are, there they are. And you'll see it's a different training tree. So how is that going to work? If you've got a level, a unit of level 8 sword militia and you promote them to iron cap swordsman, are you going to lose all those skill points on that sword militia? In which case... Unit promotion kind of seems like a pretty pointless ability. You'd be better off just creating an independent Iron Cap Swordsman. Or are you going to get those uh, veterancy points, but they're just going to be reset? So that's something I'd really kind of like to know. But something that is an, it's an ability that's not yet been implemented, even though we've got the button promotion doesn't seem to be working. So that's kind of something I was just sort of curious about. So yeah, that's kind of just what I wanted to dig into, really. That's kind of what I wanted to demonstrate, that there's quite a bit that you can learn from a lot of these, um, you know, specific abilities and things. And so the way some of them are implemented, you know, some are good, some make big differences, some don't. So for example, on, like I saw this one, just a minor point, but on these javelin men. I really quite like these javelin men, it's quite good fun. Uh, increased javelin amount by one. Okay, that's fine, that makes sense. That's a, that's a valid thing. When they only carry two or three javelins anyway, adding one is, is quite a percentage increase. And if we go over to the unit tree, um, and foolishly I researched it, and this is kind of what made me think about it, if we go to the javelins, there is an improved supplies. Each level increases domain javelin is ammunition, ammunition capacity by 2% of base value. So in total, for getting all these five upgrades, and they were not cheap, they were something like 1,000, 2,000 honor points per time, but that's only a 10% increase. And I suspect that 10% is actually less than one. I don't know if it rounds, but I suspect you actually from all that, at most you may get one javelin, but more than likely you're probably going to get no javelins because 10% is not going to be, um, you know, where, uh, of like four javelins, 10% is only not even going to be one, is it? It's going to be h less than half of one. So I suspect that's a completely redundant ability. So it's really kind of important to dig down and think about the abilities before you research them because some are really good and some are really pointless. Um, and I think there's kind of a lot to be learned by that. So anyway... 
Hopefully that was vaguely interesting. I just kind of thought it was kind of interesting, all the different abilities that each of these things have and some of the hidden statistics that they kind of highlight. I particularly thought that one with the archers on the high ground was interesting. I didn't actually know that. I had no idea archers got a high ground benefit. Makes sense, but I didn't realise it was something that was implemented in the game. So anyway, hopefully it was useful. If you found any um, sort of hidden statistics that I haven't mentioned in this video, do let me know in the comments down below because I kind of like to learn about them. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, subscribe to the channel and I shall see you all on the next one.